Hello, everybody. Welcome to Thursday, September the 10th. I'm so glad you're here. Miss Sweet Valera, thank you so much. Actually, I should be sending you something. Congratulations on your new grandbaby. That is so special. I'm so excited for you. Hello, everybody. Hello. Today, we're making a fun little mug rug. Yes, we are. And this video is live. So if you're watching on the replay and want to skip around to the fun stuff, feel free to skip around. If you're here live and watching, I hope you participate in the chat area because one of the reasons why we come live is so that we can all spend time with one another. Hello, everybody. There is a free pattern for this mug rug, y'all. If you haven't gotten it, isn't that cute? If you haven't gotten it, the pattern is in the description box. It's a one-page PDF. It looks just like this. All right, there's no written instructions. I'm gonna show you how to make it today, but just to let you know, there's probably a 100 different ways to put this together. I'll be showing you uh, one of those ways today, but y'all, there's uh, probably a 100 different ways you could do this. You could even make this as a quilt as you go if you like doing quilt as you go projects. You could do that with this mug rug. I'm not even putting a binding on this mug rug, y'all, but if you want to add a binding, the backing measurement on the pattern uh, allows for a little extra to use the backing as your binding on the front, or you can trim it off and use 41 inches of binding that you make and attach to your mug rug. It's so sweet, but I'm going to do mine super simple today. No binding, and yes. What is a mug rug? Just a big coaster. Uh, a mug rug, yeah, yeah. Uh, so mug rugs, I use them for all kinds of stuff. Okay, this one is uh, thinner and a little bit longer. It's perfect for uh, setting a drink on, on your desk, and a little snack. And then you can wash it if you need to. Uh, for the kids to sit down and have a snack and wash it in place of paper towels. I use mug rugs as uh, mouse pads on all my desks. They're great. Thin batting. You can quilt them and the mouse works just great on them. Uh, you can pack these in a bag and have a picnic. So yeah, they're all different shapes and sizes. Yes. Thank you, Miss Jadera. Teresa, oh my goodness, there's so many different ways to do the applique on this. Today, I'm going to be doing a uh, freezer paper applique. It's raw edge applique using freezer paper. Uh, when we get to that part, I will let you know if you want to use like a Steam a seam, wonder under heat and bond. I'll show you what you need to do if you want to use a fusible. Today I'm using freezer paper. Yes, you can absolutely use felt in the middle instead of a batting. I've done it so many times, and it's actually a, it makes it a really nice batting if you use felt. Absolutely. It's so great to see everybody. Thank you so much to all of my moderators. Y'all are awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, just as a reminder, before we get started, if you have questions for me, if you can type them in all caps, it makes it really easy for my eyes to see it. My phone's a little far away <laughs> and it catches my eye. I don't want to miss your questions, but if I do, please repeat them so that uh, I have a chance to answer your questions. Uh, before we get started, <clears throat> Sand of the Sun, remind me about Elfster at the end of this video if you're still hanging out. And we'll talk about Elfster and the swaps. And Miss Hazel, while you're here, I'm going to go ahead and answer your question. You asked before the live started, you're looking at getting a Juki. Yes, you can use a thread spool holder behind your machine. I have one now, and I use the larger cones of thread. And uh, if you want to see how to thread your machine with that, send me a message over on Facebook. But yes, you can use one. <clears throat> yes. 
Yes, mug rugs are perfect to use up your scrap batting. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, sand of the sun. Remind me at the end so I don't forget. What is the most popular size for a mug rug? Sonia, uh, they're all different sizes. They're all different sizes. I prefer the larger ones. I prefer the larger ones. Let me just hold up one before we get started. Uh, this is one I made a while back. It's actually about the size of a sheet of paper, maybe maybe half an inch smaller. This is my favorite size because I use it like a paper towel and then I wash it. This is actually the mouse pad that I'm using. But those are my favorite, the little bit larger ones. But yeah, you can make them smaller. <clears throat> Vicki said, I thought this live stream started at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, it's 12.06. We started just a couple minutes ago. Freezer paper. If you're having a hard time finding freezer paper where you are, okay, I buy mine at Walmart. But just to give y'all a heads up, I just ordered a great big box of it. And I think it was like $11 on Amazon. And I got a lot more than I do when I buy it in the big box at Walmart. It just came in the other day. The roll is huge and it was about $11 or $12. It'll last me years and years. All right, y'all, who's ready to get started? Who's ready to get started? We have lots of stuff to go over today. <clears throat> Sorry, y'all, my voice starts to go out, especially when I get nervous. I notice when I'm nervous, my voice doesn't want to cooperate. All right, everybody, I'm gonna switch the screen over. <clears throat> to the cutting mat here we go so this is the mug rug that we're making today here it is isn't she so sweet y'all we're going to keep this one really really simple on the pattern let me show you the pattern i know the writing is going to appear backwards it's not backwards in real life okay it's just my camera but uh, i want you to focus on the applique if you want to keep this really simple, if you are extremely new to applique and uh, you want to keep it super simple, you could just do the silhouette of the teapot. That is cute all by itself. And that's probably what we're going to do on this mug rug so that you can see how that turns out. If you don't want to do all of these extra little pieces like this, you don't have to. Of course, if you're feeling adventurous or you have some experience and you want to do all the little pieces, absolutely, they're there for you. But today, we're going to just do the silhouette of the teapot because I want to show you how that turns out. So all different variations you could do with the applique, okay? And then the pattern tells you all the pieces you need, gives you a little example uh, of what it's going to look like finished, and these are the pieces that make up the background of your mug rug. And that's where we're starting today. <clears throat> yeah, you're welcome. I thought, you know, these are some little smaller pieces, right? They're smaller. So let's just do the silhouette for those who might be a little bit nervous about doing the smaller pieces. I will tell you how to do the smaller pieces. It's just like the big one, but when we get to that part, uh, I'll walk you through it. All right, y'all. We're gonna be going quickly through this part because I do wanna focus on the applique portion of this mug rug, but these are the pieces that you need. You have the main body of your mug rug. That's where your teapot sits, and that is eight and a half inches this direction and six and a half inches uh, in that direction. 
Then you need three two and a half by two and a half inch squares and one two and a half by six and a half inch strip. So those are your pieces. We're going to be sewing these three together with a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move over to the sewing machine. We're going to flip the middle one right down onto that top one and sew that seam there. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'm just lining up those raw edges. Remember to set your quarter inch seam allowance. So there's the first seam. And while we're still right here at the sewing machine, I'm just going to open this up. And then bring in this third two and a half by two and a half inch square. Line that up and sew that seam. All right, we're going to give this a press. Let me wake up my iron for today. Sand of the Sun, you got your new Singer fe Featherweight yesterday for $60. Wow, that is such a great deal. $60. So here's my piece that goes right next to the larger section. I'm going to press those seams. I'll press them over to the side because that's what I like to do. <laughs> but you can press them open if you want. Ah, Sandra, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're here with me. All right, I have that pressed nice and flat. Now, y'all, we're just adding each one of these three sections together. So I'm going to start with the piece that we just pieced together. I'm going to flip it over pretty side down. Match up all of those raw edges and we're sewing at this seam with a quarter inch seam allowance. So the actual top of our mug rug goes together really quick. I was going to pre-do this part, but I thought maybe some of you, it would be helpful to see how to do it. Again, while we're still at the sewing machine, I'm just going to finger press that right over and bring in this last piece. Just like that. it y'all there is the top for our mug rug all pieced together I'm going to give this a press what are leaders and header and footers are you talking about the little pieces of fabric that I use at my sewing machine I guess there's all different kinds of names for them. I call them leaders and enders. They just help your thread from nesting down in the sewing machine when you start sewing a seam. They also help you save a lot of thread throughout a sewing project. All right, I have those seams nice and pressed flat. And there we are, there is 
Ooh, black fabric shows all the fuzzy bits. There is the top for our mug rug. All right, why are you sewing over a, sm over a small piece of fabric when you have finished sewing the blocks? Okay, Miss Linda, that's the, the leaders and the enders. Asking if you are able to print patterns in mirror image, making our view the right view. Uh, you know what, Barbara? I could probably do that. I could probably do that. <laughs> I should have done that. Let me make a let me make a little note for the lives because I do like you ha seeing this this direction when I'm demonstrating, but it does mirror image my paper. So let me make a note. That's a great suggestion, Miss Barbara. <laughs> Paula says she's supposed to be working, but she's catching the live. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I just want to chit chat for a second because I do know that some of you are sewing with me live today. And I want to give you a chance to get these pieces added and pressed nice and flat. Aw, Vicky's wearing a dress for the first time in years. Aw, I bet you look so pretty. I don't hardly ever wear a dress unless I absolutely have to. <laughs> it's like I, just, I bet you look so pretty. Okay, I mentioned a few minutes ago about the applique for this project. Y'all, there's so many ways to do raw edge applique. All right, my two favorite ways are with fusibles. Miss Sheila, I see your post. I see, I see your post. One of my favorite ways is using heat and bond light. That's my favorite fusible to use when doing applique projects. So if you're gonna use a fusible like heat and bond light, you need to actually flip your pattern over and hold it up to a window or a light box and trace your pieces from the back side. Okay, that is for a fusible product like Heat and Bond Light. Today I'm using freezer paper. So we'll be tracing from the right side of the pattern, just like this. Because I have shaky hands, y'all. <laughs> I spared you in the tracing part. I've already traced all my pieces. The freezer paper has a dull side. That's the side that I traced my pattern pieces on. And it has a shiny side. See the shiny? The shiny is a plastic coating on the paper and you can actually put this right onto fabric and heat it with your iron and the paper sticks to your fabric. So that's what we're gonna do today. Why do we want to use leaders and enders? You might not need to use leaders and enders, Marjorie. Uh, I find Okay, one of the things that I dislike the most about piecing without using a leader and ender is that when I first start sewing my seam, sometimes those stitches get nested down in the bobbin area of my machine, sometimes. Also, uh, I'm someone who doesn't like going back and cutting the threads off of all of my seams. And if you're doing lots of patchwork with lots of seams and you pull your fabric away from the needle and use the cutter on the machine, you're gonna have longer thread tails, right? And usually you would trim those up before you keep on going so the threads don't accidentally show up pieced in the front of your quilt. That's one of the reasons why is because when I use a leader and ender, I'm cutting my thread tails when I cut apart my sections. The heat and bond in the red package, Ms. Jadera, is permanent, which means if you use the heat
heat and bond in the red package to make your pieces, you're not going to be doing any sewing. They're permanently bonded to your fabric. If you use the heat and bond light, which is like the purple package, then those pieces have to be sewn down. So if you're someone just getting into applique and oh, you want to do applique so bad, but you're intimidated in sewing all of these little pieces down, use the heat and bond in the red package and you don't have to sew any of it. It's permanently bonded to your fabric. Oh, it's so great to see y'all today. All right, so I've already traced all of my pattern pieces right onto the freezer paper. At this point, I'm going to cut apart my pieces but I'm not cutting anything directly on the line. I'm gonna cut away from the line, just separating the pieces, okay? Just separating the pieces. Yes, when I first started quilting about 20 some years ago, I made the coolest little uh, art quilt. It had hills and mountains and a really pretty sky. And on all of the hills, I put little houses. And each one of the houses belonged to a different family member and it had their, their names on it. But I didn't know anything about sewing down all of those little tiny houses and windows and doors. So I used Heat and Bond in the red package and I didn't have to sew down any of those pieces. <laughs> my mom still has, I gave one of those quilts to my mom and she still has it. And I gave one to my Nana and now my son has that one. And the pieces are all still on the fabric <laughs> 20 some years later. All right, so we're gonna be working with the teapot first, okay? The teapot. To fuse your pieces onto the fabric, you're gonna want your iron on the cotton setting, but no steam, okay? The cotton setting and no steam. Let me move this out of the way. Can you print directly on the freezer paper? Sonia, I think so, but I have never tried. I think I've seen people do it though. I think if you're using an inkjet printer, then more than likely you can. If you're using a laser printer, probably not. And that's why I haven't tried it. I have a laser printer and laser printers use heat. And I think the freezer paper would probably get stuck in the printer. Jadera, if you use heat and bond in the red package, what's going to happen is uh, that adhesive is not made for sewing through it. You can, but you might experience problems with your thread breaking or adhesive gumming up your needle. Uh, I've seen people sew through it, but it's not easy to do. All right, y'all, I have this really pretty fabric. I used this in another project not that long ago in one of our videos. I can kind of see a little bit through that freezer paper. I'm just going to fussy cut a piece of fabric for this teapot. Let's find something really interesting. Let's see. Let's find something really pretty. Ooh, I kind of like, ooh, I kind of like her. I kind of like this chair too. Oh, let's do the cameo. <laughs> let's do the little cameo. I'm just gonna hold that there so I can cut out a piece of fabric for this teapot without messing up too much of this fabric. You really just need a piece of fabric that's a little bit bigger than your applique piece. All 
I'm just cutting, trying not to waste too much of this pretty, pretty fabric. There we go. Are there Teflon needles so that you can sew through it? Uh, I don't have any of the Teflon needles, Miss Dawn, but I do know that Teflon needles would help. But really, the fusible on the red package of Heat and Bond Lights really not made to sew through at all. If you want to sew down your pieces, Use the Heat and Bond Light in the purple package. All right, I just pressed her nice and flat. So I'm going to take my teapot, the shiny side, and I'm just going to position that right on the fabric, just like that. Can you all see that cameo right through there? That's going to be so pretty. Just like that. And now I'm going to take a good hot iron and we're just fusing that freezer paper right to the fabric. No steam. And it just takes a minute. And what this does is it actually stabilizes the fabric so that you can get a nice cut on right on the line. And it gives us the template for our applique. And once we're done, I'll show you, it just pops right off of that fabric and it leaves no sticky residue in the end. So while this is cooling off, let me just tell you one of the reasons why I like using freezer paper for applique. Not only is it more cost effective for applique, because you can get a great big roll of it that'll last you for years, uh, versus fusible products, it's much cheaper but in the end, your applique is going to be really nice and soft. There's not going to be any fusible behind your fabric piece. So your applique is really nice and drapes just like the rest of your fabric on your quilt. So that's one of the reasons why I like using freezer paper. Now that this is nice and cooled off, uh, we can go ahead and cut out our our shape, right? So just give me a minute. It's going to take me a minute to get all the way around the teapot. Now we're cutting directly on the line. If you get off of the line, no big deal because once you remove the freezer paper, no one's going to see that you made a boo-boo. <laughs> That line is not going to be there. So working my way around. The top of the teapot. The little lip around the top of the teapot. A little spout of the teapot. I think this teapot is so so cute. We are almost done. Coming around the bottom. Coming around the bottom. Just like that. Now I just need to cut out this hole right in the handle. Right in the handle. I think it's actually easier if I use a smaller pair of scissors. Maybe. We'll see. Maybe. It's 
So yeah, I just want to thank y'all for hanging out with me today. We're going to be doing mug rugs for the next couple of weeks. So that's exciting. And Sunday, if y'all are following along in the Garden Archway Quilt Series, Sunday, we're actually making pieces and putting them on our quilt top. So I can't wait for you to see that. That video is not live, y'all. It's already pre-recorded. It's already uploaded to you YouTube. So all I have to do is hit publish on Sunday morning. But yes, I cannot wait to show you that. So there's our teapot. We're going to leave the freezer paper on for just a minute. <laughs> Jadera said, I just remembered you're a little rebel with your scissors. I, <laughs> I am. I am. Those same scissors do everything, Miss Jadera. I love them. All right, so we have the paper still on our teapot. And this is going to be helpful because we're going to be applying a little bit of glue on the back side of our fabric. Okay, and the freezer paper is still adding support to the fabric, which makes this much easier. Oh, you just got the garden archway pattern. Oh, I'm so excited for you. Sunday, I cannot wait to show you three different ways to put your pieces down. One of the ways is with freezer paper. Okay, but I'm going to show you two other ways in case you might want to do it different. All right, y'all. I'm breaking out the glue. This is the Elmer's glue all. You could use a school glue. You could use a glue stick if you want. Uh, I'm gonna be applying a little bit of glue. I'm not covering all of this with glue. Just putting a little bit of glue here and there. And I'm gonna spread this out with my fingers right around the edges of my pieces, okay? I'm not covering the entire piece with glue right around the edges. You might not be able to see that too much. Now I'm just going to spread it out nice and thin with my finger right to the edge. It doesn't have to be completely covered. We're going to dry this glue with a good hot iron here in just a second. So we're not bringing any wet glue to the sewing machine, y'all. No wet glue. Just like that, eh. wipe it on my jeans, there we go. And now we can turn our teapot over. When you're placing your teapot, remember you're gonna have a seam allowance right around the edge of your quilt or you're gonna have a binding, right? That's gonna come over the front. So when you're putting your teapot down, keep that in mind. I'm gonna put my teapot right there she looks pretty right there all right and with the glue still wet i'm just sliding over my pressing board just enough so you can see i'm just going to dry that glue just like this will the glue gum up my needle my machine nope see we're drying the glue it's going to be nice and dry. We're not bringing any wet glue over. Once it's dry, you can sew right through it. Y'all, I've been using glue with applique and glue basting my seams for years. <laughs> and I don't have a problem with it gumming up my needle or problems with my machine. People have been using glue and quilts for years and years. In Sunday's video, if you watch the Garden Archway quilt on Sunday, I have put in the description box of that video one of my favorite art quilters, and she uses Aline's Tacky Glue in her collage style quilts. She's been doing it for years and years. Y'all, you should see her quilts. I've linked her channel, so make sure to check out Sunday's Garden Archway video. In the description box, you'll find her channel. All right, that should be good and dry. <clears throat> oh, 
Oh, you need a sewing machine pattern. Ooh, that's a good idea. Let me write that down. <laughs> sewing machine pattern. Maybe we'll do a mug rug with a sewing machine on it. Wouldn't that be so cute? Are you taking away my... Oh, I'm taking a penny. I'm so glad. Yeah, applique is super duper easy. Yep, I'm gluing this down with Elmer's Elmer's glue all. That's what I use, but you could use the school glue. The glue all is a little bit stronger. So I've just transitioned into the glue all because it does wash out just like the school glue, but uh, it holds a little bit stronger. All right. Just waiting for that to cool down. Once it's cooled down, y'all, I'm just going to take a little pin from my adorable pin cushion on my sewing machine, and I'm just going to pick at this paper right at the edge and just loosen that up. Wow, I fused it down really good. <laughs> You can do it, you can do it. There we go. And just like that, there is our teapot on our background. The freezer paper comes right off. Can you use parchment paper? Parchment paper, freezer paper has that plastic, that shiny plastic coating on one side and parchment paper does not. So while there are uses in the sewing room for parchment paper, like using it as a pressing cloth, uh, it would not work in this application. It doesn't have that plastic coating on it. So there's our teapot. And she's so cute, y'all. I'm going to leave her just like this. But the other pieces you would do in the same exact way. So there's the spout and the little hole in the spout. You would... Apply it to your fabric, cut it out, and apply it right over top of that piece right there. Just like that. And you're just making layers, right? This smaller piece would go right at the bottom of your teapot right there. Then you could also do the handle, and that gets applied right over top of your handle just like that. And then... There's the top of your teapot and the little ball at the top if you wanted to do that. So these are just layered right on top using the same exact method. But I wanted to show you, she's cute just like that. So if you're intimidated about doing the smaller pieces, I wanna show you what it looks like without doing those on top. Can you reuse the pattern? You know what, you could, you could. This will fuse right down to another piece of paper and you could refuse it a couple of times. But one of the reasons why I like freezer paper is because it stabilizes the fabric. So let me just show you. Let me show you one of the reasons why I cut a new piece if I'm remaking a teapot. I'm just gonna fuse this right to it. So let's say we reused this piece. It's hard for me to go in and cut exactly right around there. And this fabric is flimsy, right? When you stabilize all of it and you cut it out directly on the line, it is much easier. You could do it this way and just go back right around there. But I like all of the fabric stabilized and cutting directly on the line. But yes, you could reuse it. See, it fuses. It keeps on fusing and keeps on fusing. So yeah, if you wanted to cut out pieces for the spout and the lid and the little handle, you would just get some extra fabric, some scraps of fabric, apply your pieces to those, cut them out, and layer them right on top of your teapot.
Angel, I missed your question. Can you ask it again so I don't have to scroll through to try to find it? And if I do, I, I do usually like to go back and answer questions when the video is over too. But if you're still here, can you re-ask your question? I'll try to answer it before we move on. I wish I could tell you where that fabric came from, but a friend sent it to me. Actually, like two years ago. What do you use on the back? I used the Elmer's glue wall on the back. I'm going to try to not miss your question, Angel. Going through, going through. The pattern for the batting calls for a piece of batting that is six and a half by twelve and a half inches. So that's what I have here. Y'all, this is just a scrap piece of batting. Uh, it's an 80-20. Batting is super duper thin. I like the thin batting for my mug rugs. So we're just gonna layer that just like that. Right over top. Just like that. Let me move her out of the way. Could you show your pin cushion? Sure. Uh, we made these. We made these in one of the pin cushion videos. It has Velcro and sticks right to the side of my sewing machine. So uh, if you haven't seen that video, it's in the pin cushion series. There we go. Where in Walmart do you find the paper and do you have to link online where to get the bigger amount? Uh, Angel. I will link where I just ordered the big, big, big roll. Uh, give me some time after the video ends and I will link that in the description box. But if you're looking for it at Walmart, okay, you know where, uh, let's see, they have the Ziploc bags and the brown paper lunch bags and the saran wrap and aluminum foil. It's in that section of Walmart. It's in that section. I'm so glad you asked again. All right, y'all. Because uh, there's so many different ways to do this, I'm going to go ahead and bring this over and do my quilting now. What I want to do is uh, do a straight line qu quilting right in the ditch here and here. And uh, I don't too much mind that that part doesn't show up on the back. But if you want to quilt everything so that your quilting shows up on the back, you're going to hold off on your quilting for a minute. This mug rug only has the quilting of the teapot that shows up on the back. So I'm going to go ahead and do my quilting, these two straight stitches now, while I have that foot on my machine. Okay. Da -dun -da -dun -da. sewing machine there we go I'm gonna bring this right over just like that and uh, let's pick a straight stitch I'm gonna stitch right in the ditch or close to it <laughs> I'm using a black thread so that my stitches don't show up that much <laughs> it's not completely straight I'm okay because it sort of just blends in with the background so now that's anchored down with some quilting I'm going to come right over here and do the same exact thing right over here
You could, of course, come in and do some quilting there. Let's go ahead and do that. do this other little piece right here too. So there we are. There we are. Now, okay, so for those who are extremely new and you're using freezer paper to do your applique, or you're using heat and bond light that needs to be stitched down, you could come in with a straight stitch. You could absolutely do it. It's gonna take a few minutes, but you could do a straight stitch all the way around all of your raw edges. You could use a satin stitch, a zigzag stitch, a pretty decorative stitch. You could do all of those things, but some way you need to stitch down all of your raw edges so that this doesn't come off of your fabric, okay? I'm going to be doing some free motion quilting. That's what I'm going to do, but we're going to hold off on that until the very end, okay? So I've done my quilting on those parts. I can go ahead and cl clip these little thread tails. Little thread tails. Just like that. Now the mug rugs, I mentioned at the very beginning, there's a million different ways that you could finish this mug rug, right? A million different ways. If you want to do a binding, but you don't like making binding, you can cut your backing to the size on the pattern, which is the back. Eight inches tall and 14 inches long, just like that. Eight by 14. That's going to allow you enough space to use your backing as a binding. Just like that. I do have a video. If you've never seen that done before, I do have a video here on my channel that shows you how to use the back as a binding. Or you could make your layers just like this and do your quilting and then just trim that completely off and make a separate binding to attach to your mug rug. Today we're going to keep it nice and simple and I'm not doing a binding. There's no binding on this mug rug and I'm just going to flip the pretty side down right on top of each other. Yeah, I'll trim off all the extra when we're done. Let me grab a couple of pins. I'm going to pin this right in place. Just like this. We're going to sew all the way around the sides, making sure to leave an opening so that we can flip this pretty side out, okay? Back to the sewing machine. Let's see, I want to, let's see. It's a little bit less than a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around. You could use a quarter inch, you could use less than what I'm doing. We're gonna go ahead and sew all the way around the edges. On this side, we're going to leave an opening. So I'm going to do some back spaces just to lock that. I'm going to lift up my needle and I'm going to jump 
a little ways down. Lock those stitches in and continue. go she's coming right along just to let y'all know if y'all have questions for me if you type them in all caps it makes it really easy for me to see your questions just going through penny i use <laughs> penny asked how do i keep up with everything uh i have a planner <laughs> and lots of to-do lists that's the only way i can keep everything organized and stay on track I just want to thank all my moderators today thank y'all so much why do you sew all the way off instead of pivoting at the corners because for me pivot, finding the right place to stop and pivot <laughs> I always stop at the wrong places so I just sew off the edge and then lift the needle and turn and come back. It does the same exact thing, but my spacing is always much more accurate. You could stop and pivot, but I have a hard time knowing exactly where to stop unless I give myself some marks. And uh, to me, this is just much faster. You could stop and pivot. I'm just gonna take my rotary cutter and trim off all of the extra backing. Let's scoot that out of the way now. Can you use fleece instead of backing? Absolutely. Sure. I'm just trimming away. All this extra we don't need this because we're not going to bring it to the front as our binding but it's there if you want to do that instead trimming trimming You could do this with scissors. <laughs> this is just much faster for me. So there we go. There's all the extra stuff gone away. And I am going to take my pair of scissors and just trim these corners. Just like that. Be careful not to trim your stitches. How do you make it so your ruler doesn't slide around? Uh, this one, nope, this one doesn't have it, but sometimes I put a little piece of um, the non-skid shelf liner on the bottom of my rulers, but they sell uh, little dots that you can put on your rulers too. I just use lots of pressure. Sometimes it slips, <laughs> sometimes it does. And now we can turn this right side out. We have not sewn down that teapot, so we're gonna be extra careful flipping this right side out. If you already sewed your teapot, then it's not so much of a concern, but we haven't sewn ours down yet. Are you going to put the pieces on the teapot? Nope, this one has the pieces on the teapot. This one, I just want to do a silhouette because I want to show those that are scared to do the little tiny pieces that it looks okay and it looks very pretty without them. Just flipping, flipping. I'm just trying to be really 
really sensitive around that teapot. There we go. And we're just gonna poke out all of our corners. The black fabric makes it a little bit hard to see in the video, doesn't it? Poking out the corners, poke, poke. That looks good. Two more corners to do. How do you sew the pieces on the teapot? You could use a satin stitch, a zigzag stitch, you could do a straight stitch, you could free motion them. I'm gonna show you how to sew down the teapot itself. You're just gonna use that same technique, except you're gonna go around the edges of your smaller pieces too. All right, do I need to poke out these corners a little bit more? go. I'm just going to give that a nice good little press. I'm going to turn that opening right inside and we're going to press this all nice and flat. I usually like leaving a little bit more fabric at my opening <laughs> to turn inside but I trimmed it right even with everything else. There we go. I'm gonna give that a quick press. Nice and flat. Ooh, what's a purple thing? Yeah, you could have put the teapot on after you flipped it right side out, absolutely. There we go, my opening is a little, a little wonky. Let me see if I can straighten that up just a little tiny bit. Before I switch the foot on my, ow, before I switch the foot on my machine, I'm gonna go ahead and do a straight stitch right close to the edge. That's gonna finish off my, uh, my mug rug and stitch closed the opening that we left open to flip this right side out, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and bring you back over to the sewing machine. And I'm just gonna start right here and I'm, I'm going right, a little less than quarter of an inch away from the edge, but you can go as close to the edge as you want. Now I will stop and pivot. Back around in this direction. I never know exactly where to stop. <laughs> I'm just going to do some back stitches to lock that in. And there we go. We have some threads to trim. But that finishes and closes up our mug rug. Now, while we're still here, I'm gonna go ahead and switch the foot on my presser foot, okay? Because I'm gonna put on the darning foot or the free motion foot. 
you're going to do this if you want to do some free motion quilting on your mug rug or if you want to free motion stitch down your applique. If you're just using a satin stitch or a zigzag stitch, you're going to put on the foot that you would do that with, right? So there's my free motion foot. I'm going to lower the feed dogs. And I'm going to lower my stitch length to a zero. So we are all set up, ready to go to stitch down our teapot. Now I'm going to give everybody a second to catch up. I know some of y'all are sewing with me live. I'll have to look up the purple thing. I'll have to look up the purple thing. Every bag of polyfill comes with a chopstick. I bought a great big, you know, the great big boxes at Joann's of polyfill. I have not found a chopstick in there yet. But we did have some May fun the other night, and we have extra chopsticks left over. So, yeah, Sand of the Sun said chopsticks are great to poke out the little corners of your projects. While I'm giving everybody a second, I'm going to go ahead and just trim these little threads where I started and stopped. Ooh, she's so pretty. She's so pretty. Yeah, I don't have a purple thing. I'm going to have to look that up. <laughs> but my favorite color is purple, so I'm intrigued. I'll have to look that up when we're done. So there we go. With the extra little pieces and without. Now, because so many people or someone has asked, how do you do the little pieces Let's go ahead and put the little tea, the little lid on our teapot. You want to do that? We'll put the little lid on there. Let me find where the lid is. The lid is here somewhere. So there's the lid. I'm not going to do the little ball because I want the writing to show up right there. So I'm going to cut around the lid piece just like that. I'm going to use this fabric for the lid. So I'm just going to fuse the freezer paper right to that. Jerry, oh, you should try. Just break it. Have fun with it. Have fun with it. The more you do it, the better you'll get. The more comfortable with it you will be. Let's let this cool off. Did you cut the spout out of the teapot, then glued it? All right, so there's the spout. And here's the piece for the spout. You would put it on your spout fabric just like this. Cut it out and apply it just the same way I'm doing the lid. Okay, I'm going to do the lid so that you can see how it's done. We're just working in layers. So do the whole teapot just like we've already done. And the pieces that you see on top are on top of that teapot silhouette. So we're just working in layers. So there's the little lid for my teapot. I'm going to add a little bit of glue like that and then just spread that nice and thin like that. 
nice and thin. We're going to put it right down over top, right where we want it to be, just like that. Now I'm going to just dry that glue with my iron. Nice and dry, nice and dry. Y'all, if I have missed your questions, please ask them again. I certainly would never intentionally not answer your questions. It's just I missed them. It looks like this... Jeannie said, it looks, she's asking about the one you're doing. It looks like the spout is separate. Nope, it's just a design in the fabric. <laughs> I fussy cut it, and it just so happens it's got a line right there in the fabric, but it's not separate. It's just in the print of the design. Do you steam dry the glue? Sometimes I do, Sonia. My iron is a couple years old and I think it's getting ready to go bad. Even with the steam setting off, it puts off a little bit of steam. <laughs> it, it has a mind of its own. Do you ever get the glue on the iron? And if so, what do you use to clean your iron? I use salt to clean my iron, but you can also at uh, Joann's and I think at Walmart, they have uh, a spray some kind of iron cleaner, you could use that. All right, that piece is dry. If you're worried about getting glue on your iron, I just get yourself like an old pillowcase or an old bed sheet and cut yourself a pressing cloth and cover it and then press and that keeps your iron nice and clean, okay? So there's the lid for our teapot. We're just working in layers, pieces right over top of the silhouette. Okay, we're gonna move over. We're gonna do the free motion stitching of the teapot. Of course, that's optional. Use any kind of stitch that you want, okay? When I'm doing applique, I like using um, the blanket stitch. I like using the zigzag stitch. That goes by pretty quick. And, uh, and I love the satin stitch too, but for this mug rug, I'm just going to do the straight stitch. Okay. So we're going to pick a starting point. Let's start right there. I'm going to bring that bobbin thread up to the top, just like that. So there's both threads. You might not be able to see them because I'm using black. Now we're just going to go around the outline of our teapot. I am not sewing down the exact raw edge. And so because I've used freezer paper for my applique, with use of this mug rug and with washing, the little raw edge around my teapot will eventually fray. If you like doing free motion stitching for applique, but you want that to fray less, you could use heat and bond light, and that would help keep it from fraying as much. But if you absolutely do not like that frayed look around your applique, then you need to do a stitch like a satin stitch or a zigzag stitch that's kind of close together, right? This will fray over time because I'm not stitching that raw edge at all. Basically, we are drawing with a needle and thread on top of our teapot. Okay. 
So here we are coming to the lid of our teapot. I'm just going to go around the lid. We're going to be quilting through each one of these pieces at the same time. Now, I know the black thread probably is not showing up. Oh, you can see it a little tiny bit. Little tiny bit. So now we're right back to where we started. I'm just going to do a couple of locking stitches there. And now I'm going to just jump right over here and sew down the little opening of the arm of our cup. Now we're going to keep the quilting very minimal and very simple in this project. That's all the quilting we're going to do. Actually, Nope, I changed my mind. <laughs> Let's go in and quilt this little circle around the cameo. Let's do that. But y'all, you could get really creative with the quilting. You could quilt all of the background if you wanted to. I wanna keep this one nice and simple. trim these little threads at the beginning. And then, you know what, let's do the little circles like this. because I think it kind of calls for that too with this fabric, doesn't it? <laughs> I think it kind of called for it. back to where we started and now I will be done with the quilting <laughs> you can keep going and you can keep going let me show you what this looks like over here at the cutting mat and I don't know if it's going to really focus because it's focused for the cutting mat y'all my uh my stitch is not perfect it's a little wavy and it's a little wonky but it's adorable right let me see if you could see the quilting on the back. There you go. There's the quilting of the teapot on the back. Now y'all could do all kinds that you could quilt this entire mug rug if you wanted to. That's how you would add all of the little pieces, just like that. Yes, there is a free pattern for this mug rug down in the description box. Kayla says, ha, I knew you were going to do the circles. I did do the, the circles. It just really called for it, didn't it? And now it, got, it has this really neat texture right around the center cameo. 
And that's the back. Of course, I have the little threads to trim. And the black fabric has little fuzzy bits all over. I love using black, but I always have these little fuzzy bits all over the place. Tessa, some of the things you could do with a mug rug. Mug rugs, this one, this one, look, there's room for a drink and a little snack. There's room for a drink and your mouse when you're at your desk, a little ma mouse pad. Uh, it's great for kids, right? If you have kids and y'all are on the go, you can fold up a bunch of these in your bag. And when it's snack time or lunch time, break them out and use them as paper towels. And when you're done, throw them in the wash. Thank you, Miss Hazel. Thank you. Uh, yeah, this could be a little art quilt. You don't have to use it at all. You can hang it up in your sewing space, in your kitchen. You could send it to a friend as a gift. Uh, tons of different ways to use a mug rug. How about big snacks, Lisa? <laughs> That's why I like the bigger mug rugs, Miss Vicki. This one's a little thinner than what I usually make. She's a little thinner. I usually make a bigger mug rug. Not quite as big as a placemat. Smaller, about the size of a paper towel. Angel, do not be afraid. You know what? It's only, it's, it's just fabric, right? It's, in the long run, it's just fabric. And if you're scared of messing up your pretty fabric, use some scraps. Use some scraps. If you're, you know what? If you bought some pretty fabric and you paid a little bit more than what you wanted to and you're scared to cut into it, look in your closet for a cotton shirt that you don't wear anymore or go to the thrift shop and buy a cotton button front shirt from the men's section and cut that apart because it's much cheaper and you can practice on that before cutting into your pretty fabric, right? What I want you not to do is to admire it and want to do it so bad and you let fear stop you because you're only going to get really good at it by doing it, right? And the more you do it, you're going to get better and better and better. And you'll get more confident and it'll get easier. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. How do I find your video on binding? Leah, if you go to YouTube and in the search box, Type Lisa Cape and Quilts binding. Uh, I have a couple of different binding videos on my channel, but one of them, uh, I was making the vintage heart mug rug, and I used the back of uh, the back of that mug rug as the binding. So that video, I'm pretty sure, will pop up. So yes, freezer paper, freezer paper. This is one of the methods I'm gonna show you on Sunday to create the pieces for the Garden Archway art quilts. So here's a little confession. I'm making two of those quilts, the large version and the small version. The large one is almost done. It's almost done. Do you think a mug rug looks unfinished without binding? Miss Alice, you know what? I think it's all personal preference. I think it's personal preference. It would look super duper cute with the binding. And so let me show you what the difference would be in case, in case you're wondering. The binding would come over just like that. This one has a binding. See that? And this one does not. But if you did the binding, it would come over just like that. It's a different look. It's definitely a more traditional quilting look, right? But uh, this is super fast and easy. And I don't think it looks bad. I think it looks cute. So tons of different ways to do it. OK, 
Can I use freezer paper in my Accu cutter? I haven't tried, June. I don't know. I bet you there's a YouTube video on it. Or maybe someone has a blog about it, but maybe. I don't know. Jenny said, I've done both with and without binding and both are cute. Yeah, different looks. They look a little bit different, but both are super adorable, right? Yeah, Sand of the Sun said, do not use freezer paper in anything that heats up. Absolutely. <laughs> can you explain the place where we can sign up for future swaps? Oh, the Elfster. Yes, I'm glad y'all reminded me. Let me switch over to the full screen. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I think that mug rug is so cute. I like the cameo in the middle. Okay, the swaps. The swaps are taking place over on Creative Crew. So uh, Creative Crew members. And if you want to join Creative Crew, there is a link in the description box. It's over on Facebook. And uh, yes, the swaps. Let me focus for a second. So we're going to be doing two more swaps for the rest of 2020. I do not have start dates. I don't have lots of details, but I, as soon as I have that, I'll be doing an official post about the swaps. But the swaps are going to be using an app called Elfster. Elfster is free and you can download it. Uh, you can go to the website and you don't have to download anything. You can sign up right online using your computer. But I also downloaded the free app on my phone so I can check my Elfster from my phone or if I'm at the computer, I can open up our swap and look. Um, yeah, you want me to? Well, I'm yes, I'll show this. Nope. I don't have a window set up for that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Maybe I'll do a whole video showing that, but right now I do not have a witty, a uh, screen set up to display capture, which that's what I need to do. Um, If you just type in elfster.com, it should come right up. So you'll have to sign up for the Elfster, and I will be putting a link to our next swap in the announcement section on our Creative Crew page. Okay, so you'll just click on the link and follow the prompts. It's going to bring you in, and there's going to be a button where you accept the invitation for the swap or you decline the invitation for the swap. The swap, so we've done one and we just finished up a pin cushion swap. And I just got my pin cushions yesterday. They're adorable. This morning I stuffed them and finished them up. So we swapped pin cushions. We'll be swapping mug rugs next. And then we're going to do a Christmas ornament swap. I do not have dates. Uh, no dates yet. And I will have like detailed instructions that you need to follow and stuff like that but yes Mimsy said we did yo-yos too yeah that w actually I did not host the yo-yo swap that was hosted by someone else who asked permission to do that and I wish I would have joined in the yo-yo swap but I'm just just too busy to make the commitment but Linda asked a question. I Am I right in thinking that you don't need to raise the presser foot when you are changing directions as you quilt? I am not very familiar with free motion quilting and thought that you had to. Nope. Nope, Miss Linda. I don't know if you were here when I did the free motion quilting. If not, you can go back on the replay to that section. 
I did not raise my presser foot when I was changing all the directions and I'm just moving the quilt right underneath the presser foot in all the directions in all the directions the only time I raise my presser foot is if I want to jump from one place to another then I raise my needle and raise my presser foot and ease up on the tension of the thread and then when I start again I lower the needle and the presser foot and then I can move the quilt all around without lifting up the presser foot So yeah, the Elfster. The Elfster was the first time, it was the first time for me using Elfster. And uh, I think it was a little confusing at first, but once you learn how to navigate through the app, uh, it's pretty simple. And so the way the swap will work is uh, when I figure out the dates, you can have a week to RSVP or join the swap. I'll give everybody a week to come in, make up your mind if you want to do it or not, join or decline. There will be a cutoff date for the RSVP. And on that date, Elfster takes everybody's name and swashes them around. So I might get your name, but you might get somebody else's name, right? It'll give you a name and their address. And then you make your mug rug and send it and you're going to have like three weeks to make your mug rug and send it to your swap person. The pin cushion swap, it was so much fun, y'all. It was so much fun. June, you're so welcome. You're welcome. Do you have to be on Facebook to join? Also, can you take part from the UK? Miss Linda, yes. The, the swap is a creative crew swap. Members of the creative crew uh, are the only ones in the swap. And so you have to be on Facebook to join the creative crew. It's free if you're on Facebook there's a link that brings you over to Creative Crew. You have to answer the two security questions to join. Once you're in, oh, I think you're going to love the Creative Crew group. I call it a family. Uh, we share all kinds of creative things, not just quilting related, but all kinds of arting genre creations. Uh, if you're in another country other than the United States of America, when you join the swap, you're going to be prompted if you're willing to ship outside of your country. Uh, if you check that, if you check it, then you're willing to send to other countries. You're accepting the responsibility of the postage, whatever that might be. If you're on a budget like I am, uh, and you can only send to your country then make sure that it's either I can or I cannot ship outside of my country. It's going to swap you with someone, let's say you're in the UK. If there's another member in the UK, it's going to swap you with them. Okay, so your shipping should be relatively less. Unless you're okay shipping overseas, then you can check that box and you might get someone in the States or in Canada, who knows where. Yeah, I got my pin cushion and I stuffed it this morning. Let me grab it. She actually sent me two. Miss Teresa sent me two. Aren't they cute? This one had a little button in the middle, so it's kind of like a little, like a little tuffet, really. Isn't that cute? There was that one and then this one. I love them. I was so excited when they came yesterday. Thank you, Miss Sonia. Dixie Doodle said, I'm still refusing to join Facebook. I get it. <laughs> I, 
I get it. I do have, there are some members in Creative Crew who really just wanted to join the Creative Crew. So they created a Facebook, but they don't use it for anything other than coming into our group. Uh, Tuesday nights, every other Tuesday, we do a live, and it's really a show and tell, like a trunk show of projects. Last night we did it, and we focus that live on your projects and your questions. Uh, sometimes I go live there in Creative Crew. Sometimes other members go live and show projects. Miss Linda has done uh, a couple of videos on Quilt As You Go. Miss Alexis is going to be making a popcorn bag that you can put in the microwave. And I'm still holding you to it, Miss Maureen. One day, Maureen is going to teach needle tatting in a video on Creative Crew. So lots of fun stuff happening. We do Zooms. And I love the Zooms because then I get to see you and you get to see me, but we get to see everybody at the same time and have conversation. Sometimes it's about a specific topic. Sometimes I just open the Zoom for four or five hours while I'm working and people come in and they go and hang out throughout the day. So it's a lot of fun. But if you don't want to join Facebook, I totally get it. Unfortunately, because... Even in, even in a creative crew swap, which we're, I think we're a big group, but in reality, y'all, 3,800 members in a Facebook group is not really that big. If you look at some of the other Facebook groups where they have 100,000 members, we're still a small group. But even being a small group, I think we had close to 80 members in the swap. That's a lot of members to keep track of making sure everybody sent their stuff, right? If I opened it up to the whole world through YouTube, who knows how many people would join the swap and I can't, I couldn't handle a swap that big. Are we back? Are we back? Are we back? My internet went out for a second. I think we're back. Yeah, Zoom. I was talking about Zoom. If you have a webcam or a phone with a camera on it, you can join the Zoom and uh, we get to see your lovely face. You get to see ours. And uh, it's the next best thing to being in person. <laughs> the next best thing. The next best thing. I don't know why my internet went out. Yeah, Dort, uh, if you pay a taxes for things coming in and out of the country you, and you want to do the swap, make sure to check that you want to swap with someone in the same area as you because, yeah, that can add up when you have to pay special surpluses and taxes and extra shipping. That can, that can add up quick, right? Yeah, 94 people. 94 people swapped. Just going through, trying to make sure I haven't missed anybody. I'm going to be here for just a couple more minutes. So if I have missed your question, if you could just do me a favor and repeat it, uh, we'll try to get all the questions answered if you're here live. Is Zoom an app? Yes, and Zoom is free. So there's different levels of Zoom. You can Zoom free for 40 minutes, right? Through the app for free. During the quarantine when everybody was shut down and nobody was leaving their house, I decided to pay for Zoom because we were Zooming every day in the creative crew group for at least an hour, two hours. Uh, so we were meeting every single day in Zoom. I paid for the Zoom. So if I host a Zoom meeting, we can do a six hour Zoom with my Zoom. But for free, you can have a 40 minute Zoom. Anybody can do it. Uh, 
Miss Sheila, yep, we're still live. We're still live for just a few more minutes. Jeannie, thank you. Yeah, uh, I started that quote yesterday. That's for a client. Those are all baby clothes. They're all baby clothes. And she wanted all the blocks to be the same size with a sashing in between. So yeah, I cut out all the baby clothes, got them interfaced and cut out. And when we're done here, I get to go buy some fabric for that quilt. Vicki, oh yes, you could have come joined us every single day. And then you could have shown us your pretty dress. We still Zoom, but not quite as often, not quite as often. So if we sign into your Zoom, we can stay on longer than 40 minutes. Yep. Uh, was it last Friday or the Friday before I did an open Zoom room from, it was like 12 noon until it was almost five o'clock when I shut it down. So it was like four and a half, five hours and I was working and people were coming in. Jeannie was there. She came in and then she left. She went and bought some fabric and we were still zooming when she came back and she showed us what she bought at the store. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> so when is the next Mug Rug Live? We're doing the live videos every Thursday, uh, 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. So next Thursday, we'll be doing another Mug Rug if it is something that you need a pattern for, like yesterday, was it yesterday or day before yesterday, I uploaded the thumbnail with the pattern in the description box. So um, keep an eye out on my channel. If it's something you need a pattern for, I'm going to try to put it out at least a day or two ahead of time so that you can get that before the live. It might be that you don't need a pattern for the next one. I don't know. I don't know which one we're making next. Thank you so much, Marjorie. Yeah, isn't it cute? So let me just show you, in case y'all just jumped in. In case you just joined us. This is the one we made today. Y'all, there's a free pattern for this down in the description box. That's the one we made today. And that's the one you saw on the thumbnail. So you could do it all different variations with all the different pieces. Or you can do it very simple, just the silhouette. I went ahead and added one piece in there so that you could see how to do it. But yes, so there's the mug rug. Isn't that so cute? <clears throat> All right, y'all, I hope you've had lots of fun. I hope that you're able to access the free pattern if you want it. Don't forget that's there. Also, uh, there's links. There's links down there for um, Creative Crew. You can follow me, Lisa Cape and Quilts, on Facebook. There's a link for that. And then uh, I'm going to be adding a link to the great big roll of freezer paper that I just got. I'll be adding that later, okay? I'll be adding that in a little while. And Miss Mimsy, thank you so much for posting the links. Thank you to all my moderators. I appreciate y'all so much. It takes so much stress out of doing a live. It really does. I just want to thank y'all for hanging out with me and I can't wait to see you Sunday. That's not a live video Sunday. It's not live. It's pre-recorded, but we're making pieces for the garden archway quilt. I can't wait for you to see it. It's so hard keeping that a secret. <laughs> I struggle. Sunday, I'll see you for the garden archway quilt. And then we're doing another mug rug live next Thursday. And in the meantime, 
I'll be popping in and out on Creative Crew, so post your pictures. If you make this mug rug, I want to see it. Post some pictures so we could see it. I love you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Where's the screen? Here we go. Thank you so, so much. I'll see y'all next week. Bye.